Namo Buddhaya, this is Avinu Kulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 56, uh, that is uh, Upali Sutta. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description, so you can read the discourse at your end. Okay. So in this discourse, what is what is happening is that Buddha was staying in Nalanda, near in Pavarika Mang Mango Grove, and this at this around this time, uh, Mahavira, the Jain ascetic Mahavira, was also residing in Nalanda. So Buddha and Mahavira were uh, com complementaries, right? They were exist. Uh, contemporaries, sorry, they were contemporaries, so they were at the uh, existing at the same time. So uh, the Jain ascetic Mahavira were also residing uh, uh, with the large assembly of Jain ascetics, and one one of his uh, Mahavira's uh, 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 devotees was Digatapasi. Now Digatapasi approached the Buddha, and uh, uh, he went to the Buddha, and Buddha asked Tapasi that Tapasi, how many kinds of deeds does the Jain ascetic of the Natika clan, which is Mahavira? Describe for performing bad deeds. So, uh, Dik Tapasi said that we don't use the word deeds, we use the term rods. right? And he said there are three kinds of rods, physical, verbal and mental rods. And uh, uh, out of that, the most blameworthy of those rods is the, uh, what Mahavira says is the most blameworthy is the physical rod. So, uh, so Buddha just clarified that, okay, you are saying physical rod. So, uh, Digatapasi said that uh, according to you, what is the how it is characterized? So Buddha says that I don't use the term rods. I use the term deeds, uh, the various kinds of deeds. Uh, I also have the same segregation: physical, meant physical, physical, uh, verbal, and mental. And the worst that according to Buddha was the mental uh, deeds. I describe mental deeds as being the most blameworthy for performing bad deeds. Not so much as physical deeds or verbal deeds. So then Dikitapasi went to the Mahavira and said <coughs> that this is what was the discussion that has been happened. And uh, uh, so uh, Mahavira said that no, you have told the right thing that uh, as per the my knowledge, it is the physical deeds that are the most uh, this thing. Then there was a householder Upali in the in the who was. Uh, uh, practicing in the Jain Mahavira's uh, 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 discipleship. So he said, no, let me just go and I will uh, refute the uh, Gautama's, Buddha, Buddha's doctrine and uh, I will take him on in debate and drag him to and fro and round about it like a strong man would drag a fleecy ship to and fro and round. So he was like, he was bragging about his debating abilities and he was bragging about the fact that what the Mahavira was saying is the perfectly right thing and uh, what Buddha was saying is wrong. So the Mahavira said that, okay, go and refute the ascetic Gautama's doctrine. But then uh, Digatapasi said, Digatapasi said that, no, sir, please don't go because ascetic Gautama is a magician. He knows a conversion magic and he uses it to convert the disciples of other riches. So generally at that time, what was happening is that Buddha's knowledge was so superior to those of the other religions that whoever went to him for uh, kind of uh, refuting the doctrine became his lay follower or became uh, a part of his sangha. So, so they said that. So, Digopali said that no, he has some magic, and you should not go there because if you go there, then you will become his disciple. So, Upali said no, no, it will, it, it is impossible, it will not happen. And um, it uh, so uh, uh, Mahavira said it may be possible that Gautama could, Buddha could become a uh, Upali's disciple. So, go householder Upali. Refute the ascetic Gautama's doctrine. Okay, so then Upali went, and Upali went and discussed with the Buddha that, uh, sir, I want to debate with you on this particular thing. So okay, then Buddha said, what do you think, householder? Take a Jain ascetic who is sick, suffering gravely ill. They reject cold water and use only hot water. So so in Jains they use only they use only hot water. They don't use cold water. Uh, uh, those ascetics at that time because they said that cold water contains germs and if we bath from cold water then the germs, the living creatures would get harmed. So they use only hot water even though cold water is required if someone is sick. Not getting cold water they made out. Now what does the Jain Natika says would be reborn? So so he said, Upali said, sir there, there are gods called mind bound, they would be reborn there. Why is that? Because they died with mental attachment. So now what has happened is, though the, 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 
the issue was regarding the physical like bathing the person reborn uh, 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 as a mind bound god and why because they died with mental attachment right because there was this mental attachment that is was there right so somewhere that mental thing was there which which led them to be reborn as in that particular realm so that was where buddhist tried to show that it is the mental deeds that are more important than the physical deeds then uh, so upari did not like get this so he said that no no i still believe that the physical rod is more blame worthy then buddha gave the second example what do you think householder take a jain ascetic who is restrained from the in the fourfold restraint obstructed by all water devoted to all water shaking of all water pervaded by all water when going out and coming back that means whenever they walk they accidentally injure many little creatures now what results does the mahavira say they would incur so upari said sir any unintentional acts are not blame worthy but what if they were intentional they are very blame worthy but what does the jainatika say that intention is classified in the mental rod right so again buddha said that you are saying that uh, uh, if there is an intentional action and if there be a repercussion but the intention lies in the mind right again you are contradicting you are at one place you are saying that the physical rod is more blame worthy but here also when they injure the living creatures though they injure the living creatures by a physical way but it is the intention that caused them to do that right and that intention is the more uh, thing uh, uh, is is the bigger thing again he did not uh, uh, kind of agree or pali agree, did not agree then buddha gave the third example that uh, what do you think upali is nalanda this place full of prosperous populous full of people he said yes sir what do you think householder suppose a man were to come along with a drawn sword and in one sword he says in one moment i will reduce all living creatures within the bounds of nalanda to one heap and mass of flesh what do you think householder could he do that he said no sir it will not be possible because even 20 30 40 50 men couldn't do that how come only one person can do how then buddha said how do you what do you think householder suppose an ascetic or a brahma with a brahman with a psychic power who has achieved mastery of the mind were to come along and say i will reduce nalanda to ashes with a single malevolent act of will what do you think householder could he do that so upali said yes sir an ascetic or a brahman with psychic power who has achieved mastery of the mind could reduce 10 20 30 40 50 nalandas not only one nalanda 10 20 30 40 50 nalandas to ashes with single intention of the mind right so so again buddha said again you think you are saying something else and now you are saying something else right so you are contradicting right so then buddha talked about that uh, very the wilderness uh, uh, of dandaka kalinga majja matanga how did they come to be uh, this way so upali said yes sir uh, they were because the malevolent acts of will by the seers of that wilderness that means those you know people who had great power of mind by the acts of will they made those places as as it so uh, so buddha said now you are con- you are satisfied that the mental thing is acts are the more uh, kind of a blame worthy and the more worst acts as compared to physical he said sir i was del- already delighted and satisfied with the buddha's first simile itself nevertheless i wanted to hear buddha's further knowledge that's why i was opposing you so he says that excellent i i i i go for refuge in the buddha so he decided to leave his a uh, refuge in the mahavira and become a refuge uh, become uh, a, re- a lay follower of the buddha but then buddha said householder you should act after careful consideration it is good for well known people such as yourself to act after so buddha said so buddha even stopped him you know he he said i am becoming a refuge in your sangha so he said buddha said no he said first you decide be take a careful do not take any hasty decision so he was even more delighted he said that there are uh, fo- followers of other religions if they were to gain me as a disciple they would carry a banner all over nalanda the householder upali has become our disciple so that will they will you know kind of uh, market it like that that householder upali is our now, now our disciple but you uh, on the contrary you are some a person like that i am coming to you to become a follower still you are saying that you 
kind of make a careful decision. Then he says, for the second time, I go for the refuge to the Buddha, to the teaching and to the Sangha. So, uh, so then Buddha said that your family has been a wellspring of support for the Jain ascetics. You should consider giving to them when they come. That means Buddha said that you have been a Jain follower, Jain uh, follower of Jain uh, uh, Mahavira. You should consider giving to them. So again, he was very much, you know, uh, in awe of the Buddha. So he said that I have heard that you know, gift should be given only to the Buddha and his disciples. And uh, you say like that, but you are encouraging me to give the gifts to the Jain ascetics. And uh, so he said, for the third time, I go in your refuge. refuge. Then Buddha gave him the training, step-by-step -step training on giving ethical conduct and heaven and, and all these things, the no four noble truths and everything. And, uh, and then Upali saw, attained, understood and fathomed the Dhamma. He went beyond doubt and self-assured. So he said, now he said, okay, I have to go. So he, Buddha said, okay, go, no problem. And then when he went and uh, he went back to his home, he addressed the gatekeeper, my good gatekeeper. From this day forth, close the ga gate to Jain monks and nuns and open it for Buddha's monks, nuns, la laymen and laywomen. Right? And then... And then it, the word uh, uh, reached the Mahavira that Upali had converted to Buddha's teachings. And uh, and then they then uh, Mahavira went to Upali and uh, with his uh, following and then wanted to know. So the great keeper restricted him. He said, so "You are you are not allowed because he said only Buddha's Buddha and his uh, Sangha is allowed. You are not allowed." So uh, so because Upali has now become the Gautama's disciple. So, so then there is this whole thing about then the discussion where Upali met the uh, Mahavira and uh, uh, the Jain, the Mahavira was very, very angry at Upali and he said that you are a moron and I asked you to go and refute the Buddha's doctrine. You have come back and you have converted yourself into Buddha's doc doctrine and uh, you have been converted by Aztec Gautama's conversion magic. So, so uh, Upali said, sir, this conversion magic is excellent. This conversion magic is lovely. If my loved ones, relatives and kin, kin were to become converted by this, it would be for their lasting, lasting welfare and happiness. It would, it would be for their lasting welfare and happiness. Then he, he, he basically gave a simile of a... Of a he explained the comparative uh, teachings of the Jain uh, and Brahmin uh, and Buddha by way of a kind of a simile of a, of a monkey... That, for example, a pregnant lady was there. He asked her husband to, you know, go and buy a monkey. And so he, the husband buys a monkey. And then the 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 wife says that have the monkey dyed in the color of yellow and pressed on both sides. So the dyer would say that okay, I can dye, but I cannot pound or press. Similarly, the doctrine of the Jains look fine initially for fools, not for the astute but can't withstand by, by scrutinizing or pressing. That means the guidelines, the, the doctrine will not stand when it is scrutinized or pressed. As compared to that, the analogy, second analogy was that the Brahmin uh, took, uh, instead of buying a monkey, he took a piece of garments to uh, the dyer and the dyer would not only uh, color them in whichever color they wanted, but also can also be, though it can also be pressed. So similarly, what... Uh, uh, Upali said, doctrine of the Buddha looks fine for the astute, not for the fools and it can withstand being scrutinized and pressed. So any doctrine has to stand the test of scrutiny. So Upali said that it stand, stands the test of scrutiny. And uh, then he, he, he spoke several verses in praise of the Buddha and uh, and then, then at, in, towards the end it is shown that uh, the Jain Natika Mahavira was not at all happy. He was very angry by uh, hearing that Upali, not only that he has converted to Buddha's teachings, but he is, he is also singing all these praises of the Buddha. So this is how it ends, right? Now, uh, this is what is there, so I have just kind of translated it. It's not to kind of put one kind of religion uh, above and the other religion below. It's not like that. But basically the thing is that what Buddha was trying to say is that there are three kinds, like phys physical, this uh, mind uh, actions, body, right? actions by the body. Second is 
verbal actions by the through speech and third is actions by way of thoughts so buddha said the mental actions are, are the most blameworthy because see it's basically from the mental actions so what, what my little understanding is that from the mental actions flow the actions of the speech and actions of the body so what the mindfulness that we have to keep the most is our thoughts if our thoughts are positive then our speech will also become positive and our bodily actions also become positive so physical when it comes to physical actions is it comes to the last right because the thoughts have been so much nurtured the speech has not been controlled that over time it happens like way of a body that means like a violence happens through body or a sexual misconduct but the main thing is the thought of lust if that is corrected at the first instance that is the most subtle thing if that is paid attention to and corrected then it would not come to you no know, sexual misconduct at a physical level so please do reflect on this and uh, all the all the teachings of the various masters hold their ground uh, so it's not that some teaching is better and the other teaching is not good and uh, we have to just take whatever is the positive in whichever teaching is there right so i hope this video was useful do please uh, think through reflect on this read the discourse at your end and share the your insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya